Here we have Monsieur crepes, chocolate uh, banana crepes, two dollars and fifty cents. That's what happens when you move into expat areas. I mean, to you, two two dollars and fifty cents probably sounds like a good deal, but you know we've been paying a dollar to a dollar fifty for our meals, dollar seventy on the high end. Two fifty is foreign food. Vegan ramen. Vegan ramen. Yeah, see these are. These are foreigner prices, which you'd expect. I mean, this neighborhood is a foreigner neighborhood, so. Vegan burger. Oh, this is Tam's. Hey, are you Tam? Hmm? Are you Tam? No, Tam, um, her ex-husband runs the shop now. Oh, okay. I'm just an innocent bystander. Oh my God, you're <laughs> pleading not guilty then. All right. But cool. they make good food here. They do. I read that online. That's, yeah, I heard of it. Really good. Thank you. Where are you from? Um, Seattle is home. Oh, okay. But I live here now. Oh, cool. Did you move down here? Yeah. So are you going to stay? This is Den of Vagabond Buddha. We were wandering around Da Nang and we ran into this gentleman, Roy Stevenson, who's been to 50 countries and has decided that he's probably going to retire here in Da Nang and he tells you why. Uh, that's what this video is. But you can also click the link below this video to find everything out that, about Da Nang. Uh, livability, cost of living, cheapest flights, walking tours, tours, expat beach tour, nightlife, the name, life and food. Okay, back to our video. Well, I've been here for two and a half years. So do you do visa runs or did you get a retirement visa? Um, well, we get a 12 month business visa. Oh, it's a one year visa. A two month business? 12 months. 12 months. Yeah. One year visa. As an American, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cool. And, um, so we, we do have to leave the country when we renew our 12 month visa. So once a year? Yeah. Oh. You like, uh, is it Dana? Is your favorite part of Vietnam that you like? Um, yes, we like it here because it's not as crowded as uh, Hanoi and Saigon. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> it's not too much of a city. It's, very quickly growing and they're very friendly people here. Oh. Oh. The people here are um, almost rural. In fact, there's a lot of people live in Da Nang from the surrounding um, counties, oh. Oh. provinces. Well, you can recommend us to go after Da Nang because we are here for three months. We try to find a place to yeah. Yeah. In Vietnam? Yeah. Traveling so, about. I see. Um, so you have no... Uh, planned schedule. Well, we kind of have a plan, but we like to ask because often people who've been here longer have ideas about their favorite sure. places. Yeah. And mainly we, we're interested in places where people like to retire in Vietnam. I see. Yeah. Um, this would be the place I would recommend for retiring. Okay. Unless you want a huge city like Hanoi or Saigon. Okay. Um, so you should go there definitely and have a look around. Okay. We didn't like about Saigon was that <clears throat> there was kind of one area that was still being built right. for um, international um, expats. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And um, when we were there looking around, which was about a year ago, there wasn't much there. Just a lot of um, large buildings being built, so it wasn't very um, didn't have much character like this place. Right, know? right, right. Cool. Have you been spending time in Nha Trang? Are you a fan of Nha Trang at all? Um, Nha Trang is heavily infested with uh, Russians. Okay. Ah, oh, the Russian town. <clears throat> and if you like um, surly Russians, um, <laughs> well then it's a great place to go. Okay. <laughs> all right. I think that Dano is better than I do somewhere. Well, we'll see. Um, we'll Dalat is certainly worth visiting. Not sure a retirement place, but my wife and I go to Dalat um, over the the hot summer here okay. to cool up because it's at about 4,500 feet altitude. Okay. And so you get a nice chance to cool up there. So nine here, three there, or how do you yeah, split the year? Yeah, something like that. Yeah? Wow. yeah. And what the hot month would be, say May? Uh, June, July, August. June, July, August. Part of September. Okay. <clears throat> and did you buy here or did you just rent or? No, you know, um, I'm a travel writer. I've been around the world, like 50 something countries. 
<clears throat> and I've concluded that the world is perhaps a little too unstable to buy a house anywhere. Yeah. yeah. I think you're far better uh, renting because uh, you're from the States, right? Yeah. What, what place, what part? Uh, well, I grew up in California, but uh, I last lived in the U.S. Uh, in 2007, and I was, uh, then I was in Portland, Oregon. Okay. Yeah, my wife and I lived in Vancouver. Oh, nice. Washington. Okay. And so we're very familiar with Portland, and right. our home is in Seattle. We actually have a home there okay. that we rent out. Right on. Um, but I would say that this would be a nicer place um, than most to live. Uh, it's very low key. Right. And we like the people here a lot. Okay. Yeah. It's great to know. Yeah, thank you so much for your, yeah, no your thoughts on the have subject. You, um, have you, uh, are you planning to go up to Halong Bay? We've been to Halong Bay, uh, oh, Hanoi. Uh, Did you do a cruise up there? Yeah. Yes. Oh, good yeah. for you. And we went to Hoi. Hoi uh, Hoi An. Hoi? Hoi. We're Hoi going to Hoi An Hoi. next. Oh, good. Yeah. You should spend a few, two or three days here because the, the old city is a fascinating place. It's kind of like a Disneyland, except that I think Disneyland sort of models itself on Hoi An. Oh, nice. nice. <clears throat> um, the rest of Hoi An is just a... Your basic busy little Vietnamese city. Okay, okay. But um, I think Dalat is certainly worth going to. Right. Um, it's the city, they call it the city of eternal spring because it's every day it's somewhere between 65 and 75 degrees. Right. And there's quite a lot to do there. The Vietnamese go there for, um, for holidays. So it's packed with locals, right. people from all over Vietnam. Are they there mainly in the hot season? Do, do they do what you do, or are they um, year-round? I think year-round, but we, we were there about six weeks ago for a couple of weeks. Right. And um, there, were, there were a lot of Vietnamese tourists, not a lot of expats, not a lot of Westerners. Okay. A lot of... Uh, this is Dan of Vagabond Buddha. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, could you please like it, comment, or subscribe to our channel? That would really help our business. Thanks a bunch. Uh, tour buses passing through for a day or two, right, right. full of Russians and Chinese. Okay. Um, but we saw very few Westerners uh, when we were walking around. Right, right. So do you have a web page that I could promote for you, or are you, are you just right sure. for magazine? Um, yeah, um, <clears throat> you asked earlier, yeah, it's roy-stevenson.com. Roy Dash yeah. Stevenson. Steven, S T E V E S O N? Yeah, just like Robert Louis. Okay. So yeah. I wish I had his talent. I, um, it's on the film, baby. Um, oh. yeah. So, um, <clears throat> my opinion <clears throat> is that right now the world's perhaps a little um, too, too unstable to be buying property. Right. Um, no doubt you've considered Chiang Mai and places like that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And But right now, um, Chiang, Chiang Mai is. Um, going very nationalist yeah and um, we spent nine months there before we moved here right right <clears throat> and we liked it but it's um, stinking hot um, it's a great place right it's a lot to do but um, it's in a big bowl with mountains all around it and the heat just sits there whereas here you usually get a breeze coming through oh nice <clears throat> and um, so I just, and right now, um, we still get the uh, expats um, newsletter from Chiang Mai. Right. And the place is becoming a ghost town because they essentially make it far more difficult to renew visas there. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. No, no doubt you know about that. Yeah, I've run into that too, yeah. You yes. have to fly in now on a number of things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're going there next, uh, in a couple of weeks' time, but. Um, the few friends we have left there are telling us that it's like a ghost town compared with what it used to be. Right. So um, that's a pity, um, but I, you know, that's really is the point I'm trying to make. About, it's a, yeah, it's a great point you're making. Yeah, um, I would not buy a house anywhere because right now, with politics, international politics, being as they are. Um, you know, it, it, all it would take would be someone like Donald Trump to piss off someone in Vietnam and they'll, they'll say, uh, all Americans out. Right, and you there know. you are with a house somewhere you can't live. Yeah, yeah and, and if you have property, right. then 
basically you've just had a huge loss. Yeah, and that's that's just one problem. You could have there could be a devaluation of the of the dong relative to the dollar. And it could be any of a number of things. Yeah, and yeah, so not just international uh, politics. But, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so you know, my advice is is to rent. Rent, yeah. Until you're sure yeah. that this is a place, and and even then, I'm not sure I'd buy it. So I, I probably even these days wouldn't buy property in Panama or Mexico, which are American outposts. Yeah, yeah. You know, I really. I I'm I'm the same way. I, I don't I wouldn't I don't think I would buy foreign. Um, I own like you do in the U.S., but I don't see the point because the rent relative to price is still good in the U.S. Uh -huh. There are other parts of the world, I don't know about here, but where the rents are low compared to what the price is. Right. And so even if you had to rent it and leave, you wouldn't be getting much return on your money. So. Well, there is that. And, um, I, you know, rents are pretty darn good. We, my wife and I live in a place just along there, about 200 yards. And, um, there are, they are catering now for um, middle class or, or more affluent um, expats. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so they are, um, you're seeing some nicer apartments. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of the, the young kids here, backpackers and, and single people, they'll only pay two, three, four hundred bucks a month for rent. Right. And that's and for, like a, for like a one bedroom. Yeah. yeah. And they're perfectly happy. And that's in this neighborhood. And you're all around you, yes. Okay. This oh. Antong area is the tourist area. Okay. Well, how much, may I ask how much you and your wife are paying? Yeah, we're paying 900 a month. Is that for is, a two bedroom? or? Yeah. Okay. So I have an office. Um, and that's considered very, very high for here. Right, right, right. But, um, you know, we can afford it and I'm bringing in an income or we're bringing in an income. Right, right. So, um, so, so what is your whole, if you don't mind my asking, what's your whole budget for the month? Um, and my wife does all that. It's probably in the region of 2500 Okay, for two. <clears throat> yeah. With 900 in rent. So you're, uh, what's that, uh, uh, you're another 14, 1600 in expenses. <clears throat> yeah, um, our food budget is $30 a day, and <clears throat> um, we live extremely well here. Right. We'll right. often eat out three meals. Wow. And our food budget is 30 bucks a day, and <clears throat> there are days we don't even come close to spending that. Wow. So, so this is an Italian guy and his Vietnamese wife. Oh, nice. Hi. <clears throat> and they, um, <coughs> They run this, they have good breakfast in here. Uh -huh. And they also, um, she also runs this restaurant over on the right. Okay. The next property as well. Oh, nice. <clears throat> so speaking of Mexican towns, what's your favorite? Um, I don't particularly have any favorites. The one I do need to get to is San Miguel de Allende. Oh yeah, it's lovely. I lovely. have not been there, but love it. all accounts, and a lot of my travel writing friends and, and the writers that I coach, um, are writing about it. One of them just wrote a nice piece a few months back about how <clears throat> the moment she got there, she realized that was the place for her. Right. <clears throat> um, I, I would probably say Oaxaca uh, yeah. or Guanajuato. Or uh, Guanajuato. Guanajuato those yeah, two. So I mean, I, I love San Miguel Allende, de Allende nice. but um, it's. Um, um, I really love Mexico. And, and it feels a little too Americanized for me. Well, yeah. yeah. It's um, San Miguel de Allende now is really an expat community. It is, yeah. It's, and and it, because of that, the costs are higher. Right. You don't have those, I, until you get out of town a little bit, you have the little you know, family restaurants and that right. kind of thing. Right, right. Uh, but I would say Oaxaca and Guanajuato and, uh, are, are probably two I would check out while you're there. Yeah, those are the two we have been to. And we did enjoy them probably the most out of any of the Mexican towns. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, it's, um, <clears throat> I, my wife and I also um, enjoy spicier food. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, beans and rice is fun for a couple of weeks in Mexico, but kind of, you know, it, it's not as exciting as, as curries and, and the... Yeah, Asian food is better, let's face it. Well, I, yeah, at least it, I think so. It's got, it's I mean, got love, some serious personality. Mexican, yeah. <clears throat> and the thing about it is, I mean, you've got Thai food, <clears throat> you've got Vietnamese food, it's totally different. Totally different. <clears throat> you know, even Cambodian Lao have got some yeah. 
their own little, you know, special. It's it's way healthier. Let's face it. Well, yeah, the Vietnamese. Um, have you been to the market? This local one here. Uh, Cho Bac Mian. Uh, no. Oh, it's only it's about 800 meters from here. Yeah. <coughs> it's about a 10, 15 minute walk. Right. <clears throat> um, and uh, you go there and you see all the fruit and vegetables. And they got you know the butcher ladies and they got the fish ladies and oh, cool. all that and it's a real local Asian market. Nice. When my wife and I go there once or twice a week to stock up on fruit and veggies, and um, <clears throat> we seldom, if ever, see any Westerners. It's all locals. Right, right. <clears throat> so it's a real thing. And the stuff is dirt cheap. We get <clears throat> our backpacks and, and carry bags filled with fruit and vegetables. Right. <clears throat> um, Sometimes shrimp will buy a kilogram of shrimp, and it's as in jumping around fresh. Yeah, right, right. <coughs> and the whole lot might cost us 15 or 20 bucks if we splurge. Wow, wow. And I, I couldn't even come close to guessing what that would cost in a QFC C in Seattle. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, it's crazy. probably. Well, I know we got. Uh, it comes out at $3 per pound for shrimp here, and they're fresh. <clears throat> and it's something like $18 yeah, I was gonna say $18. for frozen shrimp yeah. in Seattle. Right, yeah. And that you don't know how old they are. And why do they need to fri freeze it? They're right on the ocean. <laughs> right, right. <clears throat> so, well, thanks so much. You've been very, quite a resource. Uh, my pleasure. But please, um, if you will, if there's a contact on uh, my um, travel we'll do. on my writer's website. We'll, we'll I have do. another website that I work with travel writers on so getting published. Okay. And you can see that access. Um, it's called pitchtravelwrite.com. Okay. And there's a link from my writer's website to that if you want to have a look at that. Right. And and my contact email is, is on both of them, I think. Okay. Because I like to have a look at your... Um, yeah. Do you, you call it a blog or a website? Uh, it's, it's a website. Um, uh, it's both. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> I'll have just, a look just vagabond Buddha, but I will email you so that no worries. Yeah, yeah, that'd be Thank a you. pleasure. Cool. Okay. Nice meeting you. Have a nice day. Good luck. Take care. Oh, this seems like this place is very nice. Yeah, it's a nice place. Yeah. Small world, huh? Small world, and that uh, my friend didn't meet uh, any uh, Americans. American, and we met. Just one, one day. <laughs> one day we met one. Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching our video. Come to Vagabond Buddha, check out our retired cheap reports, also our retirement planning and all the information you need to learn how to retire internationally for less money than it costs at home. Come check us out.